example, find the local maxima and minima of the function f of x equals x cubed plus 4x squared over x squared plus 2. So rational function. All right, let's go ahead and find the derivative of this. So f prime of x is equal to, it's going to be this times the derivative of that minus that times the derivative of this over this squared. So we're going to get x squared plus, uh, did I, plus 1. I think I used a slightly different set of numbers here. Let me just double check to make sure that um, I'm not going to end up with some values uh, that are different than normal. This is 3x squared, 3x squared. You know what? I actually ended up doing my arithmetic wrong on this one. So that's not a problem. We'll just go ahead and do it, and um, we'll finish it off based on what's written here. So it's going to be x squared plus 2 times the derivative of this, which is going to be 3x squared plus 8x, right? minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So it's minus x cubed plus 4x squared times 2x, excuse me, all divided by x plus 2 squared, the denominator squared, and we're going to set that equal to 0. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, uh, let me multiply it out. So x squared and 3x squared is going to be, so this times that, it's going to be 3x to the fourth. x squared times 8x is going to be plus 8x cubed. And then 2 times 3x squared, it's going to be 6x squared. And then 2 times 8x is going to be 16x minus x cubed times 2x, so it's going to be minus 2x to the fourth, and then 4x squared times 2x is going to be minus 8x cubed all over x plus 2 squared equal to 0. The 8x cubed and the 8x cubed go away. I have 3x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth, so that takes care of the x to the fourth. I have a 6x squared. Uh, and I have a, so that takes care of that. And I have a plus 16x, plus 16x all over x plus 2 squared equals 0. Uh, the denominator goes away, so it's just x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 16x is equal to 0. I'm going to factor out the x. So I'm going to get x times uh, x cubed plus 6x plus 16 is equal to 0. So I know that one of the values is equal to zero. And again, because I did my arithmetic on my piece of paper here um, incorrectly, I used an x plus one, x squared plus one instead of an uh, x squared plus two. Uh, basically, we just have to find the other root of that, you know, whatever it happens to be. So let's say it happens to be. Um, my guess is it's only one root here. So let's just call it x equals. A. Let's just call it A. Well, when we have that, we're going to end up doing this. So we have x equals 0 and x equals A are our two critical points. So we're going to end up with 0 and we're going to end up with A. So we're going to have to check a value in this interval, a value in this interval, and a value in this interval. And um, plug them into the derivative to see what they are. So we can go ahead and do this interval right here. It's not a problem. So let's check. Uh, 
actually I don't even I'm not even sure whether a is positive or negative so you know what let's take that back and let's do it this way so we said that we have x equals 0 and we have x is equal to some number a well a itself can be a positive or negative root I'm not exactly sure which it is um, so if a is a positive root, what I have is 0, and I have a over here to the right of 0. So I have to check a value there, check a value there, and check a value there to see whether the function is increasing, decreasing, or otherwise. Okay, um, if it is negative number, then of course 0 is here, and a is going to be to the left of 0. So I have to check a point here, check a point here, and check a point here. Well, since I don't know what a is uh, because of my um, arithmetic, um, I can go ahead and at the very least check what's to the right and left of zero. So let me go ahead and do that at least. So that shouldn't be a problem. So let me go ahead and take a, a negative one and a positive one. So if I do f prime of negative one, And what did, see, what did we say what prime was? Let's make sure we have that right. So let's go ahead and write what f prime is. So we have it, f prime of x is equal to um, x to the fourth. We said we have x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 8x all over x plus 2 squared. This was our f prime. So I'm going to take, uh, again, I don't know what a is because of the arithmetic issue, but I can at least check to the left of 0 and to the right of 0. So let's take f of negative 1. Well, when I put, I'm sorry, f prime of negative 1. When I put negative 1 into the f prime, I'm going to end up with, uh, this is going to be 1. This is going to be plus 3 minus 8. This is always going to be uh, positive because it's squared. So let's see here. So I'm going to negative 1. Let me make sure. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 minus 8. So I'm going to end up with something which is a negative number over a positive number, which is a negative number. So f prime at negative 1 is going to be less than 0. So this is going to be decreasing. So to the left, it's going to be decreasing. Now let's go ahead and check f prime at 1. Well, it's going to be 1. This is positive. This is positive. This is positive. This is positive. This is going to be 0, so it's going to be increasing. So at the very least, I can tell you that my 0 is going to be a local minimum. Um, I'm Because I don't know what a is, I'm not exactly sure. But again, if you go back and find the root, of that particular function that we had, you'll find what a is, and it'll tell you whether it's either positive or negative, and then you can check points to the left or right of that. Um, my guess is that no matter what a is, positive or negative, it's going to end up being actually a local max. So it'll probably be increasing here and decreasing here, or it's going to be, uh, yeah, increasing to the left and decreasing, so it's going to make it a local max. My guess is that it's actually going to be a local max. Uh, the only other option is that it ends up not changing sign at all. It ends up going from negative to negative or positive to positive, in which case it's neither a local max nor a local min. But I can say with certainty that zero is a local min. So there you have it. And I apologize for the, um, uh, for the arithmetic error. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph as is to confirm whether it's a local max. Yes, so it is going to be a local max. So it's increasing. So it looks like the root um, was somewhere around negative 2. Therefore, uh, it's going to hit. So we know 0 was the local min. And sure enough, uh, this is the actual function, the correct original function. So yes, it looks like our root is going to be here. The derivative is going to be 0 at, looks like, somewhere like negative 1 point, something like that. So um, there you have it. Local max, local min. Thank you so much for joining us here at educator.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.